Well, hi, Charles. Good to be back with you on Facebook Live. Uh, great to be with you again, Amanda. Yeah, I was watching. I loved watching your Voices of Black Faith Freedom, which I know we're going to talk about a little bit here. So uh, I loved seeing you throughout February on Facebook Live. But um, today we're back to talk about some exciting programming that is coming up next month and to offer a little preview for our viewers. Uh, but before we get into the meat of that, um, I thought we would talk a little bit about uh, some language that we've started using at BJC recently, that religious freedom has been white too long, um, and talk a little bit about what we mean by that and how that feeds into this exciting programming uh, that we have coming up. So last piece, last week, I wrote a piece for our Medium channel uh, titled Religious Freedom Has Been White Too Long. And in it kind of put out there what we've been talking about as a staff for a little while now. Uh, we were inspired by a quote from the great James Baldwin, something that he wrote for the New York Times back in 1969. Um, came to our attention last summer uh, because it was also inspired the title of a book by our friend Robert P. Jones, who was our speaker at our luncheon last summer. His book is called White Too Long. Uh, but the quote from Baldwin, um, he says, I will flatly say that the bulk of this country's white population impresses me and has impressed me for a lo very long time as being behind any conceivable hope of moral rehabilitation. They have been white, if I may put so put it, too long. They have been married to the lie of white supremacy too long. The effect on their personalities, their lives, their grasp of reality has been as devastating as the lava which so memorably immobilized the citizens of Pompeii. Uh, and wow, right? It's a, wow. <laughs> it's a, it's a wake up call. I think uh, it it was a wake up call in 1969 that, of course, was not really heated, and so we at BJC snooze, are, yeah snooze button, <laughs> snooze button was hit yeah, several absolutely. times absolutely absolutely, yeah. um, and we at BJC are committing to not hit the snooze button on it. You know, now that we wow well, that this was brought to our attention, we are thinking about it in our context and our support for faith freedom for all. How have we, BJC, been married to the lie of white supremacy? How do we have white supremacy in our institution? How do we have white supremacy in the way that we talk about and advocate for religious freedom? We're asking these questions, we're grappling with this issue. Um, and uh, so if you, know, if you wanna learn a little bit more about our frame of reference, check out the Medium piece. Um, but also check out some of our programming and and Charles talk to us some about what kind of programming we've been up to already. Yeah, that, that quote it inspired so much and you know we were already working on certain things just because you know of the diversity that we have in have grown to have in our BJC staff and and still are working to um, have more. Um, but when you have that type of diversity you're able to hear different voices. And so that inspired us to do uh, you know. Black History Month, you know, we did the theme of uh, Voices of Black Faith Freedom. Had some tremendous uh, faith leaders and, and you know, even had a, a father-daughter combo step in, uh, uh, T-Body and my body, and just talk about what does faith freedom mean for uh, those different individuals, for a pastor of an AME church here in DC, for uh, a generation a father-daughter conversation for uh, Black non-believers, what does faith freedom mean? And then to bring in a minority uh, religious group to say, what, what, does, black, what does faith freedom uh, mean for a minority religion here in America? So we've had the opportunity to get a perspective in that way. And, you know, also just highlighting, you know, uh, Women's History Month this month, BJC, highlighting women that have been important um, to the uh, push for faith freedom for all in our work. But we felt like there was still more we could do it. It's continued. This is just not a one month thing. This is just not a year thing, but this is a continual effort to, to learn and open up um, the, the, the eyes of people, but also bring forth the voices for so many. And so with that, 
we're so happy that we're going to have our 2021 Sheraton Lectures be titled Religious Liberty Has Been Wiped Too Long, Voices of Black Scholars. And so, like I say, our faith freedom thing, we, we actually had pastors, had um, you know, people in the community, but there, there has been an element of white too long that has been a part of our academia. Um, we, we've had the way uh, religious, religious liberty has been taught, um, religious heritage has been taught, has, has been white too long. There are other voices, not even other, I, I just say it back, it's not other voices. There are voices that are probably just as important or even more important than the mainstream voice. I, I've always been a type of person that I learn more from somebody that I haven't been around than I do the people that I've been around for. And so that's a, that's the thing that we've done. And we're so happy to have four excellent uh, scholars uh, with us for our uh, certain lectures this year, starting with Dr. Teresa uh, Smallwood, who has worked with us before here at BJC with, with uh, the Loose uh, Project and the things that we've done with those students, but to have her uh, come back as, as uh, a professor at Vanderbilt um, Divinity School and, and having her uh, theology background, but also her legal and law background to bring to this conversation. We're so happy to to have her. Also, we have Dr. Anthony Penn from Rice University. Uh, many of you might have saw him on the PBS documentary of the Black Church. Um, you know, he brings the, the, the element of not only understanding the humanist side, but just he, he even puts hip hop into religion. And so <laughs> it's going to be fun, just the, that, that perspective and that academic perspective of, of teaching at Rice and being around those students and understanding that. Um, so happy to have Dr. Uh, Nicole Miles Turner from Yale, uh, and you know her book *Soul Liberty: uh, The Evolution of Black Religious Politics in the Post-Emancipation Virginia*. It's it's close to home here. Any of us that know anything about religious freedom know that knows that uh, Virginia, the state of Virginia, had a lot to do with uh, our religious freedom and even even the, the clauses in our First Amendment you know, probably wouldn't be where they are if it wasn't for the state of Virginia. So her perspective and her research and her knowledge background, we'd love, we're gonna love to have her. And then finally, uh, we're gonna have Dr. David Goldley, who is at Duke Div. And, you know, he, he has been the research professor for theology and black church studies at Duke Divinity School. So as you can see, we have a powerhouse, uh, you know, panel of, of, of lectures here that will bring so much, like I say, the, the, the scholarship that is sometimes missing. You know, we, we, we see it when we're doing our events. We've had events so many times in certain lectures in the past where the focus has been on the people that have, uh, we think have been with religious liberty so long, the, the constitutional law professors or uh, those who we've had connections with. And so, we, we, we have other connections now. We have uh, a diverse uh, variety of connections that we need to lean upon and learn from. And I'm so happy that we're able to do it this year with our 2021 certain lectures. So that registration is open for that. Uh, I know it's gonna be dropped in the link here, but registration is open to that April 14th at 5 p.m. Hey, go ahead and register now because we don't know how many, uh, you know, it's virtual this year for the first time, but uh, you want to make sure that you, you're getting in there. So, uh, uh, man, I'm, I'm happy about this being the event that uh, we're going to do for certain this year. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is so exciting, Charles. You know, in, in you know, most years, we go. We go on the road. We go to a college campus. Uh, every three years, we're back at Mercer, uh, which, of course, was the home university of the donors who endowed this lecture series, Buddy and Kay Sheridan, uh, and are so grateful for, for their gifts to make this come. And, but, you know, and we live stream those, and we have recordings on our website. People can go out and check out the excellent Sheridan lectures from many years. But uh, given the virtual space that we're in, given that we cannot travel safely, that we cannot bring people together safely in rooms while the pandemic is still, um, you know, a, a issue here. This is an incredible opportunity to hear from four leading scholars and to hear them 
um, present their thoughts on the theme of religious liberty has been quite too long. And then to be in conversation with each other and with you. Um, so our, our friends, our viewers are not gonna wanna miss this opportunity um, to join us live for this event, um, April 14th, 5 p.m. Eastern. It is free, uh, register <laughs> today. Um, and, you know, Charles, as you're looking ahead, you know, what, what are you most hoping for out of this event? What, what, kind, what are you hoping this, this conversation, this particular conversation, which again is one piece of this, this larger theme that we're exploring right now, what do you hope it brings to the conversation? I, I hope it has something for from the past, present, and the future. Uh, meaning, uh, the scholars that we have have been working in academia. They they've probably had things that they uh, experiences that they've had um, working through. Uh, you know, uh, the predominantly white institutions that they they work for at, at this point in time. But that doesn't mean they don't they don't bring a perspective from just being black in America. And now I'm a scholar in, in these buildings where um, we're getting students that come through that have been taught about um, America and religious liberty in a certain way and from a certain perspective. And now what about this can I do to disrupt that narrative? And how do I go about disrupting that narrative? Also just understanding, um, you know, we know that it has been white too long. How do we go about changing it? What are the, what are the steps that we do to go about changing it? And, it? and it's so important from the academic standpoint because uh, so many times things are pushed aside as just, oh, opinions and feelings and these type of things. We know uh, with, with talking to the black scholars, we're able to go through the, the context of the, the, the books that have been put out, the, the uh, scholarship that has been it just accepted as oh this is how it is no we actually get to dive deep in with uh, these four scholars and say no no this is a particular area that we can have change in not just in a talk about it change but as in no we can get this part changed as um, the way that students actually hear this who they're hearing it from I'm, I'm just excited about about that just the aspect of uh, everybody getting to be on the platform together. Uh, I'm excited about moderating it, <laughs> the conversation, you know, just to give you a little bit about how it's going to be structured. You know, each one of our uh, scholars are going to have eight to 10 minutes to present um, on, on their own. And then we're going to come together in a conversation about that. So it's not just going to be um, no, no knocks on the, the past professors that have done this and, and uh, lecturers because it's one person speaking. I'm so happy to have, uh, we're so blessed to have all four because all four of these could have been uh, certain lecturers on their own. Um, but to have, them to, to have them together to do this, it, it's, it's going to be great. And, and I think it's going to open up the eyes of other people to think, well, maybe I wasn't thinking about it in that way. This issue, this particular issue, I wasn't thinking about it in this, in, in this way. And so I hope that for the future, it opens up some eyes and allows for other voices to be heard that way. because just because we have uh, voices of black faith scholars and uh, doesn't mean we're saying those are the only voices that need to be heard they're just the ones we're going to highlight this time but i'm sure some of their uh their history and what they've been doing they've come across voices that have influenced them that don't look like them mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And as we look for the rest of the year, I know you've got plans, Charles, as our director of education. What are some of the other um, programming that we're looking forward to as we continue to explore, you know, the truth that religious freedom has been white too long? Right. I mean, for, for me, uh, I've always come to religious freedom by hearing from other uh, religious groups and uh, non-religious groups and learning from them. And I'm saying other than just myself that I know about, not that they are other, uh, but just from other than what I know about. And so this is a perfect opportunity to continue that and continue that with, you know, uh, indigenous uh, faith freedom, voices of indigenous faith freedom, voices of Hispanic faith freedom, um, you know, voices of any community that, that, that hasn't been heard from, from the BJC and the BJC has a spotlight and we, we want to spotlight. Um, this is an effort that we're doing, um, and we're not trying to put it on anybody else or throw it to anybody else. This is something, if we're going to be faith freedom for all, we really have to 
uh, be they freedom from all, just not from the perspective of, of us uh, and, and, and what we have been traditionally uh, in the past. But know, to, know where America is at this point, but also uh, balance that with where we want to go. And so I'm, I'm excited about the, the possibilities and programs that are happening, but we're definitely going to have uh, you, you hear more about this series of faith voices of faith freedom from, from different uh, people here in, in America. Yeah. And, you know, I think as we talk about white too long, we think about how limiting that our perspective has been. If, if we're, if we're married to the lie of white supremacy, if we compare everything else to a, to a white ideal and everything else is other, you know, right. if, if, if we don't decenter that white perspective. And again, white is not about skin color, as we've talked before. It's about power. It's about it's about prejudice and power. If we if we move out of the way, decenter this perspective, welcome a variety of perspectives to the table and give them equal footing, right? That we all have an equal role to play. We all have an equal perspective on what religious freedom means. You know, how much greater can our support and advocacy for faith freedom be? How much more impactful can our mission be when we do that? That's what excites me, you know, about this. And I want to invite our viewers as we're as we're on this journey, as we're on this exploration, what other perspectives do you do you think we should be focused on? What what invitations should we be making to um, to this table of faith freedom as far as the voices and perspectives that we want to highlight? So let us know in the chat. Let us know on social media. We're going to be continuing this conversation in different ways. I did want to put in a plug here um, for our Facebook viewers. If you're not already following us on Instagram, follow BJC on Instagram because we're going to continue having some of this Facebook live, but we're also going to be doing some Instagram live, um, some Instagram videos and we're talking about uh, white too long and we want you to be part of that conversation as well so uh, make sure you're you're with us on all of our channels and make sure you're also signed up to get our emails um, our email updates uh, at bjconline.org slash subscribe because um, that's where you'll be getting all kinds of updates and you know most important Register for Sheridan Lectures today. Go ahead and sign up and save the date. Mark that time off on your calendar. You're not going to want to miss that conversation. Definitely not. Man, that's, these different voices are assets. And if we can start looking at diversity and looking at whether it's diversity of religion, gender, um, you know, whatever you want to think about, it only makes us stronger when we can hear from it. I, I have a personal theology. It's not a BJC theology, but I have a personal theology that says we learn more about the creator from all of creation. You know, if the creator created all of creation, then there's something that we can learn about the creator from all of creation. So never, never hinder any of creation. We can learn a lot from it. It's an asset. Absolutely. Beautifully put. So uh, thanks for joining me here today, Charles. This has been a great conversation. Thanks for your leadership on this event. Really excited about it. Great to be here at the BJC and doing this type of work. Great. Thank you all. Bye.